Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash cultural stew. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Please listen carefully. Welcome to the Cultural Stew Podcast, coming to you from the Goat Factory Media Entertainment Studios. We are your cultural media recommendation podcast, giving you our take on what we think is worth carving your time out for, and also what we think you can pass on and maybe go cut that lawn instead. Warning, we use adult language, and there may be spoilers ahead. Hello and welcome to episode 25 for the week of December 16th, 2018. I am your host, Ron Herkins Jr., and I am here with my co-host... Anthony Carter. Valerie Vidmar. Hello. How is everyone today? Not Good. bad. <laughs> are, we, are we being honest or are we just doing the radio answer? The radio answer. What's the radio answer? Not bad. Doing so, so well today. Doing well. Just like I hope our audience is doing well. Um... I did not have a chance to even think of a song that would wrap up the last couple of weeks since we've been gone, but you are a mean one, Mr. Grinch, would probably sum up most of it for me. <laughs> oh, I, I, uh, the, f- I was going to do an album, the Magnolia album, Amy Mann's oh, song. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Is kind of how I feel this week. Oh. I didn't, I'm not familiar with it. Really? No. Yeah. You should listen to it. Is it my kind of music, though? Mm, I don't know. No. (laughs) I don't think it would be. It's a lyric. It's definitely lyric-based. Amy Mann. Paul based the whole film around her songs. And, yeah. So, it's not bad. I mean, it's a good... You're talking about it's the Magnolia soundtrack? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Got it. You? Um, Not a lot going on by Norde Venezuela. Not a lot going on. Yeah. Is it ironic? Kind of. It's the theme song to Corner Gas, which I'll talk to you about later, mm. but it's kind of, yeah. I saw that on there. Uh, it feels really silly. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since uh, we got together, so uh, we're going to go in to talk about some of the news from the last couple of weeks, go into our recommendations of the week. I think we've got Valerie's doing Sound of Music, going reaching back into the classic vaults. I am. Uh, Anthony has... Walt. Uh, a Walt Disney documentary, and I'm going to go with Aquaman, which hasn't even been officially released yet. It has it overseas, but we got a sneak preview last night, so it was kind of cool. Um, and then we're going to go into today's stew, which what would be the best summary? <laughs> I put questionable films of our youth. I don't know well, if that summarizes t- it. Films and TV. Okay. Because I was just thinking about okay. some TV. Um. And that'll roll into our media and then wrap it up with what's on our radar and what's on our queue and see how many shows I've watched the last couple of weeks and movies and whatnot. Uh, into the news we care about. Anthony. Uh, so first up, we have Bernardo Bertolucci died recently. Um, I think it was last week or so. Or this And week. for those of us who were not. He's the Oscar-winning director of The Last Emperor, the film about the Chinese emperor who was born in the palace and all around him and outside world was changing and he stayed, his palace stayed the same until they forced him out and sent him into exile. Um, I saw that film a long time ago, like when I was young. So too. Um, it was very long, but as a kid, I didn't realize how long it was until I was an adult and like, wow, this was very long. Kind of like uh, Take Command with Cecil DeMille's version, the... Charles Huston version, not a short sound. Did version. it bother you that it was song when you were little? No, I just I was captivated by it. I was so. too. But as an adult, I'm like, wow, this is like <laughs> I gotta split this up and do it in different days because I have things to do. And um, but yeah, that was sad to hear. He also did the Last Tango in Paris with Marlon Brando and that whole controversy with Marlon. And Talk him. about th- that's boring. Yeah, so uh, that was kind of sad to hear. Um, he was 77. Um. I'll tie into Corner Gas, like I did, said earlier. Corner Gas is all over Amazon Prime. Um, Gabrielle, one of the lead actresses in the show, who plays uh, Lacey, announced on Instagram that Corner Gas is on Amazon Prime, U.S., and Canada, and around the world. Corner Gas is one of my favorite Canadian sitcoms of all time. It's one sitcom I could actually watch with my daughter, and it wouldn't be vulgar or have anything bad in it. It's just clean family Good. humor. 
it was on TBS for a while, and then TBS took it off because the movie came out two or so years ago. Um, I like Canadian humor; it's kind of English humor. But is there like a storyline? Um, basically, uh, Connor guess the story of a, a man uh, who has a gas station, Brent, who owns a gas station, and his father lives across the street from the gas station, still micromanaging from a distance, and his best friend, who's not really as bright, the um, shop associate uh, who uh, has smart comments, Lacey, who owns the diner next door to the gas station, who comes in from Toronto, and basically, it takes place in uh, Saskatchewan, a small rural community, and she comes in from Toronto and brings all these new ideas to the restaurant, and he's small town folk are not really up with that. So we have seven seasons of her trying to get them to evolve and change and Brent's hip to that but still stuck in his small town ways and it's interesting. It's a lot of um, observational humor slash physical comedy and just wit and I like that. It's based on Brent's stand-up routine too so it's kind of like Seinfeld but this is a lot cleaner and more family oriented. Cool. Hmm. That's nice. Uh, Some news I saw was... uh uh, I always, I always, always want to call him Ronald Dahl. It's Roald yes. Dahl. Roald. They're making a Netflix is making a animated series based on his works. This will be interesting. So we'll get a new Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Could be terrifying. Could be good. I mean, could be good and terrifying. Yeah. Hmm. It'd be interesting. It's it's definitely for a certain genre. I mean, it's like a certain type of person or kid demographic you mean yeah i got my friend courtney's daughter this one's for the quirky kids grabbed onto it um and i think zoe kind of it freaked her out Mm. yeah because he did um Coraline, correct no that was neil gaiman oh see i'm getting those i hate to say that that i got them confused but um he did another one that she freaked out about. Give me the name again. I didn't quite hear the name. Roald Dahl. Roald oh, that's Dahl. Big Friendly Giant just came out. That's Spielberg. Did he do that? Yeah. And yeah. The Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. There's Willy Wonka with Johnny Depp, which was kind of creepy. Yeah, creepy. Yeah. yeah. There aren't that many adaptations of his. So you've got Matilda, The Witches, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda. The BFG, The Twits, Boy, James and the Giant Peach. Mm-hmm. What else we got? Yeah, I like James. Fox. Uh, Matilda scared. Uh, fantastic, Mr. Fox. Wes Anderson. Yeah. George is marvelous. Something. Matilda did not work so. for us. Ninety-three version with uh, Charlie and the Great Glass. Eisenberg. Slammed the sister. Slaughter. No. That's Eisenberg's sister, though. Is that something else? I'm talking about the one, yeah, that came out Matilda with the little girl with the little. Bang. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Jesse Eisenberg's little sister. Yeah, she was in the Pepsi commercials in the nineties. No, yeah. Didn't know. It's Haley. H- H- Haley Eisenberg, yeah, I think. I haven't seen well, her in a while. Very Super interesting. Frizzy. So yeah, that was something that came out right after we recorded the last show. Um, the cast of The Mandalorian, the new Star Wars uh, show that's going to debut, is getting huge and talented. Um, they're bringing in like um, uh, it was it Giancarlo? I would forget his last name from Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and then let's see, Carl Weathers is in it. I think uh, Nick Nolte, yes, I think is in it. Uh, being directed by John Favreau. I mean, it's just, hmm. it's going to be. I mean, Disney's got the money to really go all out and actually make this good. So I'm, I'm really interested to, to look to see what they're going to do. But um, we're still, <laughs> we're just under a year away from Disney's streaming platform finally being launched. But. How do you feel about that? I feel absolutely fine about it. Okay. It should be September, and I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Don't mind. Your next piece of news set me off to... <coughs> oh, I, yeah. I So I, I think it was the so day pissed. after we recorded I was is so when pissed. this news broke. Because I we think we had just gotten finished talking about Daredevil season two being or season three being released and getting great reviews getting great reviews and then it was announced that it was canceled and i freaked out i thought it was a joke at first can somebody give me a reason why well from what i have read it is about finances and return and apparently 
they're saying it's costing too much for them to produce it, and not a lot of people are watching it. I thought, it, and it's cause the, the rights to bring it. him back for another year. Um, so there's a little bit of push and tug here. I think there's some more behind the scenes stuff that's going on, but this news was followed up about how it's so expensive for these shows, and then they give 130 million dollars to have friends be right, in the right, season right. On yeah, that that pissed me off. Me that took me off too. And I'm just like, it's I, been out for how long? Go out and buy the DVDs. Right, I always said, um, yeah, or borrow something them from that, the library. Something that came up in the last day or so. It was either Thursday or Friday was that there's something in the contracts that a show has to be off of net or a, in re, in re, bleh, in regarding the Marvel Netflix shows they have to be off of the, their service for 2 years before they can be started up on Disney service or they can use any of those characters so i think this is a long play that if they remove them off now then we'll see it again we might see it as a reboot. It won't be the continuation of these. It won't be these same characters. But it they won't will... be the same actors. I doubt it. Are you kidding me? No. So Charlie Cox is gone. The, half of these people were struggling with trying to get. That's why our other seasons were so weird. Was trying to get them lined up and see. This is like the only. This is like my tie-in and understanding of your Marvel universe and how passionate you can get. Yeah. Is this show? Um. So with that timing, if you're looking at two years, that would put it a year after Marvel's or after Disney's uh, streaming service launches. That would be really appreciative. Which would make sense to me. Right. If everyone just stopped watching Friends and go to your local oh, library yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and rent and just get them for free because you don't have to have Netflix to watch Friends, people. Gates Public Library has friends. I only know that because I was borrowing girls Penfield. from Penfield yeah, has so. it. But you know what's easier than going to the library? Pulling up Netflix and Do you know play. what's cheaper? Library. It's free. Library. Free. Gas. If you're already paying for it, does Don't. it matter? Mm. Uh. Answer the, if you're already paying for the subscription and it's on there. Honestly, is it cheaper? This goes back to our earlier discussion about this, where I said I'd rather have a DVD so I can watch the behind the scenes featurettes and learn things rather than just have the Boom. actual. Then for you, episode. those are out there. Right. Yeah, they but are. For those of us who like to have on demand things, they're there. Am I one of those people that is going to sit there and watch Friends? Absolutely not. But it's a service, and it's out pay- there. You're paying the actors more money, too. They're getting more residuals now it's because so of it. And they don't need They made Jennifer so much money anyway. Yeah. So, okay. so in follow up to the Daredevil, that leaves only two shows that are left on Netflix in terms of the Marvel Netflix, and that is Jessica Jones, okay. which is still confirmed for uh, another season, and Punisher Two, which just kind of slyly got announced as, "Hey, there's a new series or a new season coming out in January." Those. I don't mind those. I'd but watch those. They're also presumably going to be the last. Do you want to call it? If you're gonna, if you're gonna cancel. Luke Cage and Daredevil, and Daredevil after its best season, you're definitely going to be canceling didn't, didn't, the other two. Wasn't like Daredevil the number one watched Marvel we don't know. show two years ago? We don't know. It was. Netflix doesn't release their... It was. We can like think it was. I feel that I saw we it. Can, we can feel that it was, but we will never know because People, they do I not People, if I find that, their... I'm going to post it on there. That doesn't really matter now. It's Netflix has definitely made a habit, and that's why, um, and that's why a lot of people have been pulling them off to their own streaming sites. Is because they have not been able to see how much they're actually doing. So that's yeah, that's some of that. Well, I was going to say that. I mean, I know that this is probably to your discontent, but uh, <laughs> it looks like uh, Broadway's. To Kill a Mockingbird is doing rather well. And uh, as Jeff Daniels, it was written the by Aaron, Aaron Sorkin. I know, he's wait, not wait, your guy. Sorkin wrote the... Uh, he rewrote the... For, okay. So, 220 words coming up. Okay. Interesting. Anyway, it did very well so far. And Jeff Daniels, his... Uh, yeah, they did, they did a great job. And they have a really nice write-up uh, in... Playbill and also speaking of New Broadway, York Times. Um, Network just got extended. Yes, with Brian Cranston. 
think that got extended another 90 days or something like that. It's a good show. I, I saw clips of it. So it's a good presentation, good stage. So, um, but yeah, Aaron is a good playwright too. I mean, he originally was a playwright, so I give him that, but okay. it's his, you know, Jeff is a good actor too. It's just, I rarely see Jeff in anything good, but this is something that I heard. <laughs> you he, rarely see Jeff in I anything not, good? He's... Did you ever see... I have the newsroom. I no. Besides that, God, I mean, before no that, kidding. I'm uh, saying he's gotten serious lately. It makes me happy. But before then, he was just doing stuff. I'm like, why are we not? Yeah. You can give me the huge eye roll, both of you, but that's okay. Um, Inside Actor Studio. Did you ever see him on Inside Actor Studio? He was fantastic. I Inside probably Actor. did. I watched so many episodes yeah. of that. They all just kind of meld together. Why don't they have? James is retiring too, isn't he? Yeah. Why? Why isn't that on Netflix? Why YouTube. can't we? Every episode no, on YouTube. No, they're not. Yeah, there. Not what I, I can't find them. I was watching episode after episode on YouTube. When? Like a couple months ago. I don't, I can't find them. I've been trying to. Yeah. Anyway, I just, I'm waiting for him to come out with some insane, I don't know what he's going to do, but he needs to put them out because I could watch that all day and I used to. It's funny to me after all these years, every time somebody says Jeff Daniels, the first thing that pops into my head is him sitting behind Jim Carrey on the scooter. Yes. Yeah, and see, that's crap. It is. The guy I mean, did but some good work. It, it, He's done some good work. Yeah, but that was, that's the image that's been burned in my head of Jeff Daniels, despite good work. Well, so, that's not, Jim I still Carrey, like him. too. Huh? Jim Carrey's there, too, and he's a good actor. Yeah, but that's not the image of Jim Carrey that's burned into my head. What is? Pet Detective? Pet Detective. Whoa. Do not go in there. Yeah. And that's mainly because, like, my best friend at the time, like, looked like him to a T, dressed up like him, had the hair and everything, and was, like, very animated and facially. So there was, like, a huge connection between, like, the two of those. But, yeah, yeah. it was definitely Ace Ventura of Jim Carrey is burned in my head. Unfortunately, Jeff Daniels had a, re- <laughs> like, he needed to, he was flap for me for a long time. You have flap is, he was in terms of endearment. Oh, okay. Total ass. And uh, so he was slap for a long time. So he had to um, come out of that character. And then I believe, am I wrong to say that he was in arachnophobia? No, I think you're right. I okay. And then him. I was like, what? And then um, I think. That was a shitty movie. <laughs> that was shitty and terrifying. I'm sorry. They first said it was a comedy and then it was a horror movie. It was on It was on something. As it's we were, horrible. Yeah. Um, um, it was on something as I was flipping the channels a couple months ago and I just had, to, I s- watched it for maybe five minutes and I'm just like, this is such a bad movie. <laughs> it was just bad. But yeah. Anyway. Uh, what else news we got here? <clears throat> Somebody put Stallone. I didn't. Not that. Yes, that was me. So. Uh, Stallone has announced that he's no longer making any more Rocky movies that he's going to be in. Okay. You know, that doesn't mean that the Creed franchise isn't going to keep going on, but he said he's done. Um, an interesting thing I noted was that in this film, he's 72 years old mm. in real life, and he's older than Meredith Burgess was during the first Rocky. That's amazing. And I always like, when you think of the first Rocky and you think of Mer- Meredith Burgess, I'm like, he's that old craggy guy. And I'm like, Wow, he's younger than what Stallone is right now. That's Never. and crazy. It's uh, it was eight films, eight films, nine films now that this is this has gone on. I'm just gonna say I always say it when I hear Rocky, but just go online and read the story about how Rocky got made. It's, mm-hmm. it's a great, great story, and it says a lot about Stallone. Didn't they make a film based on the guy who he was inspired to make Rocky about in the first place? Didn't they make a? I think I heard that that he, someone someone has dramatized the inspiration for Rocky. So the guy who inspired Stallone to write Rocky, they made a film about his whole. I didn't know career. that there was somebody who inspired him to write Rocky. Yeah, he was watching him fight, and then he said, "I should make a film about boxing." And really, that and also every time I think about, um, yeah. Burgess, I think of Grumpier Old Men 1 and 2. So Grumpy Old Men and Grumpier Old Men because he's playing um, John Lennon and Lemon's father. So hmm. it's just that's the I image of my head, not of Mickey, but of the cranky old father with the... God, he had been in his 80s then, Yes, yeah, sex jokes and sex puns and just loud mouth. 
Okay. Man, I don't even remember him in that movie. I only watched those once. And I, I didn't younger. watch him. Um, and one last thing on Stallone, Rambo, The Last Blood has wrapped. Oh, so when are we expected to come out? Next year, I think. Okay. It just fa- it's the last <laughs> blood. It's my mind. Yeah, that's, that's the, new, what they the last blood. Well, the, the first one was Rambo, the first blood. That's fine. Yeah, and this is the last blood. It's funny because so, thing are two coming out too. So, it's just but I'm just like, uh, he was old <laughs> in the last Rambo. <laughs> He's gonna be really old in this Rambo. Hmm. But alrighty. So that's all the news I had. It looks like we had one more on here. Do we? Mm-hmm. Wait, we did. Uh, Underneath to kill a mockingbird. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just thought this was interesting. I don't know that theaters. Uh, we're breaking the box office record in 2018 that the domestic office just hit 11 billion earlier this week. Um, with the weekend that was still, we still have weekends to go and, uh, we have, they might reach 12 billion. Uh, the record at last was 11.4 billion, which is in 2016. So. Yeah. Um, we have what? Black three Panther. Three huge movies still to come out this year. Black Panther started it off, I think. I believe it was what I read that they, that they, not started off, but they gave it the big boost. And then we have. Uh, Infinity War. And yeah. Yeah. We have those guys. And then we have, uh, I don't know how well Mary will do, Mary Poppins, but we no, have. No, I think it'll do. It's primed for. I already have. Uh, kids and grandmas and. Our tickets are already bought. <laughs> we, I have. <clears throat> a lot I think we discussed this the last show. Yeah, a lot to get about. Did you confirm that they're not in IMAX? Yes. Mm-mm. Okay. Not in IMAX. But you, yeah, they're not in IMAX. Okay. All right. Uh, a couple trailers came out in the last couple weeks. Um, the biggest one has to be Avengers Endgame. Yes. Um, so that Avengers 4. And right before that was Captain Marvel's second trailer, which expands a little bit more about what Captain Marvel is. Um, so there's the uh, the superhero ones. What else have we got? Oh, I'll go first. Um, <clears throat> Ron shared with me on our little chat network about fighting with my family, which is the Paige biopic. For anyone who knows Paige or doesn't know Paige, you should probably watch it. It's entertaining. Um, it basically talks about how Paige became... Well, how she got into wrestling in the first place and how she got to where she is now. Um, at, well, for the longest time, I thought this film wouldn't be made because, you know, Paige was in trouble with WWE and her ex-boyfriend were having issues and whatnot. But she's returned with, and they've opened her arms and they love her. We love her. I love her. So it's by Dwayne Johnson or The Rock is executive producing it. Mm-hmm. He's actually has a couple cameo appearances in the film. Playing and himself. Him and you got John, uh, not John Favreau, um... The other one from Swingers. Uh, Vince Vaughn. Is Vince it, Vaughn. Yeah. Uh, Nick Frost. Yes. Um, and this is um, written and directed by Stephen Merchants, who was the co-creator of The Office, the BBC version. And he's done a couple other things since, which means that we're in good hands because Stephen is a great writer. Um, his directing I haven't seen that much of, but if he's behind the pen, then I'm trusting it'll be a good flick. Yeah. Me. It, I enjoyed the trailer. It looked good. It did. Wasn't it to yeah. top? It most, very, most wrestling stuff don't look very entertaining. Yeah, I think it started with that. Was it, um, Putting the link would be awesome right after you I'll, it. I'll link you. Okay. Oh, what's his name? Uh, Arquette. Made a, David ready, Arquette. Yeah, that wrestling film was started off my bad taste with wrestling films. But then the wrestler came out with, uh, I'm dropping his Mickey, name now. Mickey Rourke. Uh, Mickey Rourke came out, changed my mind on wrestling films. So two different styles of genres, but still. So much better, and I had a taste in my mouth for wrestling <laughs> films. <yeah>. Um, <laughs> then we have, um, so there's a lot of people who don't like musicals. You know, that's your loss, not mine. But uh, Les Mis is coming out. Les Miserables by the BBC is having a talky version. Les Miserables. I don't want to Five do that. part. <laughs> Five part. I don't this mind it. It's going to be like 10 hours long. And it should be. It's a long story. We don't need to cut anything. I agree. Yeah. The book is huge. Let no us let him do it. Let it breathe. Um, we <laughs> have uh, Dominic West. When is this happening? Uh, I think it's either before Christmas or after. Yeah. But it's probably after. I would say the trailer was just uh, Released. Was a week ago. Yeah. Okay. So we have Dominic West is playing Jean Valjean. We have David Oyel Owo. I can't pronounce his name. 
probably can say my sure. wife. Sure. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lily Collins is playing Fatin. But a lot of colorblind, you know, diversity casting in this, which is awesome. So it's great to see that we have a talky version as well. <laughs> we can go past the TV versions and get past the Liam Neeson version, which was still good because we had um, Liam Neeson in it and Uma Thurman. And uh, uh, was that was it? good. Uh, I like the music. Um, what's his name? Okay. What's his name? He was in the King's Speech. I, I should know his name because he was Firth? in Saad yeah, Marat. Cool. Colin? It was Colin Firth, wasn't it? Colin, they played opposite him. He was the oh, Australian uh, doctor who helped him with the speech. I should know his name because he was also in... Uh, it'll come to me. Sorry. I should know his name. But a good actor all around. So, Les Mis by BBC is coming out. Long epic, but you should watch it if you don't like musicals. But you should watch the musical. Not the movie musical, but just the musical This is stage. a musical. This Correct. is the talkie version. No the, singing. The talkie. This is the five-part. Go ahead and try we to talk. read... My I one of my um my friend Angie got me a very, very, very old copy of Victor's book. And it's I have it in like I don't even know how to keep it. So it's in like Ziploc bag with like paper like paper around it and it's falling apart, but she found it in an old bookstore, so pretty cool. It's very rather large, so you could try to read it before it starts, but I doubt you'll finish. Unless you speed read. Um, oh, I can't do that. I'm getting the guy's name now because it's going to bother me. But um, so, also in trailer news, we have at Eternity's Gate, a Julian Schnabel film. He did the Diving Bell and the Butterfly. But back to at Eternity's Gate. Butter. This is about Vincent Van Gogh, who is the famous Gough. painter who I love. Dutch pronunciation. Um, oh. William Dafoe is in it. Rupert Friend is in it. And Mads, who is another one of my favorite actors, Mad Mickelson, who is in Marvel films or film. He played uh, the adversary antagonist in Dutch Strange. Really? Yes. Dutch, the Dutch is go? You go, yeah. So, okay. I'm um, sorry, I just learned something. Learned that from uh, Doctor Who. Um, so, uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, uh, I'm really excited about this because it's been forever since we've had a film about Van Gogh, not just in passing, but he's actually on screen. And funny thing is, William Dafoe is ageless, but he's old, not be ageist, but he's playing a young Van Gogh. And he looks the part. He has the intensity and the cinematography and everything just looks beautiful and very awesome. I'm captivated. I put it on my wall on Facebook, in case you're following me on Facebook. And uh, I'm just all around excited about this because Van Gogh is one of my favorite artists and I just want to see him manifested in real life. And I'm glad that Defoe is playing him because I think he has that vulnerability. Um... Defoe's been in a lot of Wes Anderson films lately. I think he's one of his favorite people now, so he's been popping up here and there and doing things. And he was also in Spider Man. He played the Green Goblin, which is kind of creepy <laughs> with uh, Tobey Maguire, but uh, still good. Um, there's that. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. How about you, Valerie? I was looking. Um, there was there were some that are just out there that kind of caught my eye. So the party's just beginning. Uh, which I'd never even heard of. So, but I'm living in a cave practically. So, uh, it's coming out December seventh, which already came out. Then came out. So, I, yeah, Karen Gillian, and uh, she directed it, but she's also in it, and it's a British American comedy drama, written. Gosh, it was, yeah, written and directed by her. Um, when you watch the preview, it's sort of like a, seems like a coming of age thing that seems a little out of control, but it, it looked interesting to me. So I would just watch the the um, trailer and take a look at it and see what you think because, I don't know, it popped out at me for some reason. Um, it's got Lee Pace in it. And Perfect Strangers looked interesting to me. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I mean, I do know why, obviously, I put it on here. But I'm just saying uh, that it um, was so it, weird. Any relation to the sitcom? No. <laughs> no. Um, was it Bal- Balco? Balzi? Balzi? I think that's his name. Serge. Um, that's the one that they think is dead or something. No, is he? No, it it was in a movie that he was dead. Oh, oh, it was uh, 
Never mind. It was in the movie, the show, the show that um, people were left behind. Not left behind. Not the not the religious left behind, but the one. The one hundred or something like that. No, no. Uh, has the guy that used to be married to Jennifer Aniston. Okay. Anyway, he was really good. So um, this show um, is coming out February 11th. Holy shoot. Jeffrey Rush is his name, by the way. That's what I was Can I just tell about. you that um, when I did this, I was very tired. That came out. I think I should probably step away from the mic. <laughs> um, because that one... Why don't you look it up and watch it? Because... It came out in 2016. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it looked really interesting. Is Never Look Away something that came out, is coming out? And then I, I that I, my right. God, I, um, I have, I'll let you research your links here. I have looked, for I, a couple uh, seconds. I, 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 that's was, this year. You're fine. Thank you. That one looked very interesting. Um, I, this has been kind of a crazy little week here, but, uh, that one, yes, thank you. This did come out uh, on November 30th. Uh, and two German s- students falling in love. And it, it is, I believe, a foreign flick. It's, yeah, about an artist. And I think you should look at, look at that. Up. I mean, I'm really doing a horrible job. But never look away. Take a look at it. See what you think. Watch the, re- the preview. And then um, I'll hand it off to somebody else who knows what they're talking about. But Godzilla did look cool. Perfect Strangers. So it's 2018. That Perfectos Desquiandos. Why am I saying 2016? January 11th, 2018. Hmm. I feel like. Yeah. U.S. release. January 11th. It's a Spanish. Yeah. Thing. It looked cool. It looked. It, you know what it is? This is what's weird. It's a dinner party. Everybody puts their um, their phones on the table and everybody sits around and whosoever phone goes off or gets a text or whatever, you have to pick it up, put it on speaker, or you have to read it to the entire table. And so whatever happens, happens, and it just turns into this huge, crazy thing. And I just thought, I don't know. Hmm. It looked, Interesting. that's the type of movie that I would watch. Sounds foreign. Is it a foreign film or American film? It's foreign. Yeah, okay. It was a like Spanish film. Okay. I just thought it looked kind of cool. Anyway. Good. Not um, that crazy. Thank you. Yeah, so the other ones that stuck out to me, uh, Godzilla 2 came out with a new trailer with uh, the big bads fighting each other. That was kind of fun <laughs> and cool. Um, I'm not a big fan, but for those who are, Downton Abbey got a preview trailer, and in that it said the full trailer is coming soon. So Thanks. People will be able to see that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm happy, but... Disney and Pixar uh, released their... Um, next one that they're going to be doing is going to be Onward. Um, haven't released a trailer for it, but they kind of released the, uh, I think it's got Chris Pratt, Julia. Onward? L- Onward is the name of it, yeah. Julia Louise Dreyfus and Chris Pratt and somebody else was the, the top three. It's already on there. It is? Yeah, look above. And oh, then the other one that I'm excited for is the Luther season five with Idris Elba got a trailer and that's coming out around Christmas. I heard so. that's really good. Oh, right. it's a great show. I and should... it's short episodes. So it's like four episodes a season. Really? Yeah. I, uh, my mother-in-law really loves that show. Yeah. It's Idris Elba. I mean, and seeing him just, he, he gets mentally torn apart. So it's like, it's fun to watch him like nervous breakdown. It's good. I like it. Okay. Highly recommend it. So, well, that is our news and trailers. Roll into the recommendation list. Anthony. So, um, we were talking about, you know, child friendly stuff and stuff you would watch as a kid versus watching with your kid and that kind of thing. At least I was thinking about that a lot. So, my daughter and I watched Walt Disney, The Man Behind the Myth. Um, it's an hour and 45 minutes, so she kind of got drifty, which means she was kind of walking around and pacing and singing to herself throughout it, but it kind of kept my attention. Um, I read a lot about Walt Disney growing up because I was a Disney kid. Um, Zoe, Zoe's birthday is the same birthday, December 5th. Hmm. Just a little throwing out there. And I think he died um, so many years ago, 1966, yesterday, I believe. In 1966? Yeah, I think okay. so. Um, but the film is 
pretty good. It's interesting. It goes more in depth. It kind of at the end you realize that his uh, daughter helped produce the film, so that's why some things are sanitized and not really talked about. Like I know the whole Mary Poppins thing was kind of glossed over in a nice, fantastical way, even though it didn't go down the way that it went down in the movie. Um, Saving Mr. Banks, as well as did you like Saving Mr. Banks? I liked the screenplay. I didn't like the execution, and I like okay. Tom Hanks a lot and okay. Emma Thompson. Um, I just feel like they could have really told more of the truth. And I wanted to see this movie. There's also it's on YouTube too, it's on Netflix for sure, but YouTube has a streaming of it as well. There's another one about Walt Before Disney or yes. something like that. That's on Netflix as well. Did you see that? I have seen that one. Yeah. And do you recommend that one? That's a dramatization, so it's more is a narrative that's right. more realistic, but it, it's still kind of sanitized to me. Is so. it? Do you think? What is it rated? I think it's like PG. It's not that bad. I mean, I'm not going to make it PG-13 or R about the man who created Mickey Mouse. But um, it's not bad. I mean, I <laughs> I really wish that... I mean, they kind of glossed over a little bit more, too, about the fact that there was a strike going on at his company and how he kind of left it to the hands of the arbitrator. And he was anti-communist and things like that. And they touched on it, but they didn't really hit it. I mean, he was on a panel with Ronald Reagan going against communism and things like that. And um, he's an interesting man. I'll give him that, reading it and watching a lot about him. But I just, I would recommend it if you're curious about Walt Disney, you want to go more in depth and you want to see who he was. But the ending is going to throw a punch at you saying, oh, well, this is your daughter talking about you, so everything's going to be fine. So that's the spoiler alert for you that it's going to be kind to him and not really dig into him and talk about the man. Some people do say, and they do mention that he was stern and hard, and but that's Steve Jobs and that's Lasseter right there in your face. Men who create these companies you know, not by themselves, but they're the face of the company. They become quotation marks, air marks, monsters. But the film is really good into that angle. It just talks about his processes and the struggle he had and how he discovered what he wanted to do. So it's an hour and 45 minutes, so it's not that long. Uh, my daughter was captivated by watching the cartoons and the singing song moments and that kind of thing and hearing people talk about him. And I would recommend it if you have time. Um that's my recommendation for the week, I guess. Cool. Um, I had the opportunity to go see Aquaman um, a little bit earlier than it's released. It's supposed to be released on the 21st. Okay. Um, Amazon Prime put out a special like, hey, if you're a Prime member, you can buy tickets early for if it's playing in one of your theaters. And I missed it. I saw that, but I didn't do it. I didn't even see it. I'm never, I'm, you have to every, send me text messages. Every regal in our area and... The AMC where I was, Sorry, I AMC hear. had three theaters running it at seven o'clock. And I lucked out because I was able to also use my uh, rewards. So it was completely free for me. <laughs> they recognized it through the, the system. So, uh, so first of all, cool. let me, let me state, I love Jason Moma as Aquaman. Okay. Um, I have from the moment I saw him as it, he just brings a little bit. Uh, roughness, coarseness to the to role. Okay, as opposed to the you know the the true on comic form of Aquaman. Um, this it just feels better to me. Okay. Um, the movie as a whole. Um, if I hadn't known that this was by James Wan, I would have never have known it was by James Wan. It is definitely not have his feel. Okay. For somebody who does a lot of horror type films, James, um, and he also recently just did uh, Jurassic World, The Fallen Kingdom. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I, it was interesting that he was the choice to direct this. Um, there was a lot of levity, a lot of fun in the film. Um, aside from uh, Jason, you've got Amber Heard as Mira. you got William Defoe pops up as one of the advisors. You've got Patrick Wilson as his stepbrother. You've got Nicole Kidman as his mother. Um, and you got um, Dolph Lundgren as Amber Heard's father. You're kidding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that threw me for a loop. I'm like, I knew Dolph was in the movie. I just, when I saw him, I was just like, oh. What color is Nicole's hair? I like silver white. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, and the music was by Rupert Gregson Williams. So the good, it was fun. It was lighthearted. It is a lot of what the DC universe hasn't been. And I don't know. 
know if it's a good thing, but <laughs> in terms of it fits Jason style. Jason is a very um, hearty, laughy type guy. Um, there's a show on Netflix called Frontier. It doesn't get a lot of um, great reviews, but I've watched it because of him. And it's already, they just released season three. Um, and it just deals with the fur trade up in um, Quebec. And, and you know, he, he plays a badass in there, but he's got these moments where he's just this lighthearted, happy-go-lucky guy. And it's just like, it's this, this common thread I've found through everything that he does. He kind of brings a, a levity to what he does, even though he's this big. Was there a video about him? Was he in a music video or? He's, you know who he's married to, right? Of course I do. Yeah. But was there a video about him? Because I think I didn't really know who he was. And there's one about his father being a father, isn't there? Yeah. Like, like what? There's one about him being a father. Like but, there's one you mentioned his kid, and they have a whole like. And Ken yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. It was a um, it was Carhartt com- uh, commercial. No. Yeah. It was a commercial. Yeah. It was the one that he's talking about his kids and yeah. his she's in his there. work. Yeah. Lisa Bonet. Um, but it goes through. It's the whole thing talking about him as a, as a father, and he's always, he wants to pass down to his kids and this and that and that. It's like I'm going to pass down these jeans to my kid. They're Carhartt. It's it, it, all the way to the end of it. I just and it's totally like, never even knew it was, it was a commercial. It's beautiful. Well, yeah, that was the thing that I found funny is like I watched this whole thing and then right at the end it's like and that's why I wear so my if you car really want to know his, <laughs> if you want to know his real like true heart, I think uh, watching that was uh, kind of enlightening about him because I just didn't know anything about him and then he seemed like a cool dude. He I did. think I'd get along with him if I, I met him too. in person. Um, is she like he's him? really if you look at his pictures of him from when he was on Baywatch and the pictures of what he looks like now, it's two yeah. different people. Him with short hair and like somewhat skinny versus full on tan Hawaiian Polynesian background look to him. Anyways, back to Aquaman. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, he he brings fun to it. Um, Amber Heard. I haven't watched a lot of things with her in it, so this is kind of. The first thing that stood out for me watching her, she plays a, a good Mira. Um, almost forgettable in this film is uh, Manta Ray, the um, Protagonist. the actor Protagonist. who plays Manta Ray. Um, because the whole th- whole thing, the main drive is his showdown with his brother. And you've got Manta Ray that just kind of comes in and disrupts things a couple times. Um Bottom line, I wish this movie was released before Justice League. Um, I had the issue with them introducing all the characters basically in Justice League. You know, it was the first time you saw Batman. It was, or not, no, Batman versus Superman. Um, Flash, you mean? And- you saw, like, bits of everybody in that, and then Justice League, everybody just comes together, and here we are after the fact, and you're getting a sort of an origin story. Because right. he goes back and tells about their story, and then it jumps into the present. Oh. Um, there is some CGI work that I thought was pretty crappy when they do the aging on Nicole Kidman and okay. and his father. Um, because the whole time I'm just like, I know his father, but I don't quite know who. The, and then when he finally comes out, like in current day, I'm like, mm-hmm. oh yeah. I see that guy and like everything that involves a Polynesian guy, right. that's the guy. But they de-aged him so much that his skin looked like um, clay, Oh, like a very shiny clay. And that's the problem I have when they try to do the de-aging effect. And Nicole Kidman kind of looked, they had some up-close stuff of her when she was supposed to be younger that kind of uh, didn't look right. And well, let me ask you this: Did it look as bad as? Well, not as bad. I won't say that. I'm putting thoughts in your head. So, Robbie Downey had a moment where they did that in um, Winter Soldier. No, not Winter Soldier. Um, I know what you're talking. Civil War. No, no, no. But that was cleaner. Was it okay? That felt cleaner to me and felt a little bit more passable. Okay. But that was also like, oh, this is a, a computer rendition. You okay. Know, you're 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 pulled into that really quickly right after that. So like it's not in your mind like, oh, that's supposed to be really him. It's like, oh well. Okay. Okay. Um I must say I was also really, 
really tired yesterday. Mm. And right in the middle of the big battle, I started I started pulling a Valerie. <laughs> Way to go. See? It happens. Exhausted. It was really but I don't know if it was because the it just wasn't engaging enough. Like yeah. The battle tired, the tired. underwater battle that they have is so insanely large <laughs> that it's overwhelming to the point that it's like I don't know. I don't know where they're going to... They've already signed off on a sequel for it. Okay. Hmm. Um, we'll see. I, If you're a superhero comics fan, go and see it. If you're a Jason Momo see, fan, go see it. Anything else, I'd say wait for it on, on video. Good to know. Um, the one caveat that I, I wanted... Half of this film was filmed in IMAX. And locally, they're only showing the 3D version, and there's not a single 2D version that they're going to be showing here. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of pissed me off a little bit because I really want to see, you know, anytime yeah. something's actually shot in a certain format, I want to see it in that format. Of course. And it wasn't shot in IMAX 3D. It was shot in IMAX 2D. That's bullshit. So. Sorry. But. You could probably see it in another town. Yeah, 300 miles away. Is really? the closest showing. Where is that? It was, I think it was New York City. Are you kidding? Yeah. Toronto's not showing it? No. Shame. Okay. I thought, okay. Well, interesting. Mm. Well, I was, uh, um, <clears throat> are you finished? Sure. Okay. I was going along with the same uh, theme of what we watched as kids and movies that didn't scar me. So we'll deal with those later. Um, so when I was a kid, we s- gathered around as a family to watch just a couple films actually that came out every year they came out once a a year and you could sit and watch them Um, one was Wizard of Oz that terrified me Um, sorry I'm from Kansas and if I hear another you're not in Kansas anymore thing I'm a freak but um, no Paul Rudd hates that I hate it too I am so sick of hearing it even though my Grandmother news Dorothy. Uh, anyway, so I went with The Sound of Music last night. We watched The Sound of Music. Um, and I had shown Zoe The Sound of Music probably two years ago when we really loved it. And I, ha- I bought the uh, sing-along version. Just because I shush it. I have lots of little singers in my house. So we like it, the sing-along version. Anyway, The Sound of Music uh, came out in 1965. Um, it was based on, the film was based on the adaptation of the 1959 stage musical with the same name, composed by Rogers and Hammerstein. And it was directed by uh, Robert Wise and starring the lovely Julie Andrews. <laughs> and uh, Christopher Plummer, Pretty beautiful back then. Um, and they loved it. I mean, they were hooked to it, the girls. Uh, I had to go in and out because I was doing stuff. Um, but it is a true story that's based on um, a memoir, the story of the Von, of the trap. Von Trap. The, well, <coughs> the, it's actually the story of the trap. It's a Von Trapps. I know it's Von Trapp. It says, mm-hmm. Maybe it's wrong. By, by uh, Maria Von Trapp. So it's a, an Austrian woman studying to become a nun in Salzburg. And then she, in 1938, then she goes over to, she's a little in love with the outside and playing and singing. And the nuns sing, send her over to be a governess uh, to the Von Trapp family. And the children, um, I kept trying to say, gosh, look, it's about somebody who's coming over to take care of the kids and trying to get the dad and have the dad and the kids form a bond. And I was like, it's very, and she had just filmed Mary Poppins, which hadn't come out yet. So I just thought it was kind of funny. Um, it's a, it's a beautiful movie. I mean, we were always happy. Um, my grandparents actually, went to Austria and went on, 
I guess they had like a tour of this whole thing and they went on that, which I don't know. So it's always kind of near and dear to my heart. I think the last time I had seen it was with my father. Um, and it's a lovely movie. You can watch it with anybody. I, I mean, it's, it's has great songs. Um, I showed Zoe, they had like a little, um, a reunion, uh, Oprah had a reunion on her show back in the day. And man, I'm telling you, Christopher Plummer comes off as a dirty old man. I'm not kidding. Who is it? He, he was, he, he drank <clears throat> yeah. a lot during the show. He, um, which kind of cracked me up. And he kept saying that, and you know, um, Julie Andrews had just had a child, so she had her little one there, and he said he was just mesmerized by her, and he just had to stay away from her. I was like, oh, okay. Like, he was just, like, keeping her. I mean, these are things that he was saying. And then this is, it got really, really weird because Liesl, who's now, like, you know, older, and she was just talking about how, and at the time she was 21, so she could drink, and so she went drinking with him, and she talked about what a huge crush she had on him. She talked about it twice in the show, kept talking about what a huge crush on she had on him, and he was saying, you know, why didn't you tell me that? What, what room number were you in? You know, like weird stuff. I was like, okay, you're a dirty old man. But they kind of skipped over that. They just kept moving <laughs> past it <laughs> anyway. Um, but uh, when she's coming back, when she's like running with her, uh, actually, the the real Maria von Trapp is in the background. Um, you can see her in the movie. They have a little part where she's in, like, I mean, she's practically, she's very, very tiny. But you, she's in there. Um, but it's a lovely movie. Uh, they say it's a movie to watch during the holidays because you can sit around with your entire family and watch it. To um, get used to, wasn't it one of the ones that aired on Thanksgiving? I don't know because I don't really watch. I don't watch um, network. Yeah. Well, I think it was like ABC or something that used to used to be their family movie or something that they aired on. Somebody did. Could have been. Um, but it's. Have lovely. you ever been to Vermont to the the Von Trapp Lodge? No. Yeah, that's where they ended up settling. The Trapp family it was singers. Just in Vermont. In Stowe, Vermont. They, Are you kidding? I, we've even been yeah. there before. There's a huge, it's the, I think oh, it's called the Trap Family Lodge now. It's like this huge, like 96 room resort. Mm -hmm. And um, when I went to go run uh, an ultra through there a couple of years ago, they actually took you up and down and they called it Sound of Music Hill. <laughs> it was on the property. Um, but hmm. yeah. So, yeah, you'll have to uh, look it up. So I say watch it. Go watch it. Watch it again. And introduce your children to it. I have a, oh, gosh, now they're seven and nine. But, I mean, Zoe loved it when she was five. So watch it. There's okay. my little thing. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, for you, the listeners of the Cultural Stew Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. And I uh, listen to service <laughs> all the time. I'm just saying I'm probably, I, I think I'm on Audible every single day. I am because I go to sleep to their books. But um, I just finished up The Life We Bury by Alan Askins, I believe. Um, it's about a college student, Joe, who has a writing assignment for college, um, and he has to just write a brief biography of a person. So he goes to a nursing home thinking he'll find somebody who has a good story. Well, he does because he run, has uh, Carl Iverson, who is a dying Vietnam vet and a convicted murderer. Uh, but he is on parole to the nursing home because he's dying uh, he shouldn't, and like he probably has a month or two months to live. And uh, researching his life, he kind of 
gets involved in the trial that happened 30 years ago and everything that happened 30 years ago and uh, new evidence comes to life. It's very interesting and I'm not going to tell you what happens. It's pretty, it moves along. I was very uh, captivated and I thought it was, uh, it's definitely a must read. So The Life We Buried by Alan Askins. So I definitely, especially during this holiday season, I mean, my gosh, you're doing lots of things and I, you can even, I even told other people, look, I know that you want to do this. So why don't you go to audibletrial.com slash cultural stew and get your free month. Get your get free month. And a book. I'm still um, listening to Mindhunter. Um, and I got one credit sitting here waiting for me to pick out my next book. So I need to, uh, to figure out what the next one's going to be. I picked out my two. I picked out one. Mindhunter is not quite the thing that you want to go to sleep listening uh, to. Oh, well, you also have those daily serial, deals. It's pretty detailed about serial killers and stuff like that. It's not stuff you want to. You have daily deals too. I always check out the daily deals because yeah. you can get some really awesome books. They had one yesterday. So I, I snagged that one because I actually wanted to see. I wanted that book for a long time, and I snagged it. And you can get great books for three ninety five, um, or one ninety five, three ninety five. The books that are normally are twenty two dollars or thirty bucks. So your daily deals every single day. So they have really good service, and they ha they're actually bringing on a lot more um, plays that are. That's good to know. Yeah, a lot, a lot more plays on there. Right? Carrie Mulligan's, um, I want to say girls and boys or boys and girls, is on there. So so again, where do you go? You go to audibletrial.com slash cultural stew. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash cultural stew for your free audiobook today. And welcome back. So we have an interesting stew today brought to you by Valerie. Okay, so I was just sitting and thinking uh, after trying to show um, at least my oldest daughter movies that I want, that I watched when I was young. And the first time I got in trouble with, uh, well, I didn't get in trouble. It was just more of like a, oh, crap, I guess I shouldn't have done that. Was uh, <laughs> they, they quickly reach for the pause or turn off of the TV. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, she also had a friend over, which yeah. I did ask her father. Uh, so we watched Indiana Jones, the first one, which was PG. And Zoe has seen PG-13 with all the Harry Potter. So I was like, this would be fine. Yeah. Uh, Ruby was fine. Zoe, the melting face, just did not work out for her. Mm. And the thing is, is I had my hand held over her eyes. Her imagination took over. Mm. So I should have just let not it. let her watch and see how fake it is because it's ridiculously fake. Um, back then it was cool. <laughs> back then, I mean, I didn't have a problem with it. And um, I saw a lot of movies in the theater that... Um, when I saw them, I was uh, probably more like Harper, where I just kind of like let things wash over me. I didn't put a lot of thought. I mean, I was mesmerized by things, but I, if I didn't understand them, I didn't try to understand. Like, what's going on? I didn't ask a lot of questions. So, I think I I kind of mentioned this as we briefly talked about it last time. Is that yeah, we I definitely have a different point of view, and I know if it's the point of view of from being a parent that my way of looking at things or my understanding of things has changed of like, Oh yeah, that's really messed up. Oh, but when you're a kid, you don't, you know, care. it never stuck in my head. It never no, like, me neither. You know, I, when yeah. you were a kid, it was more of like, and this is, this happens with guys. It's like, Oh, there's somebody with boobies, you know, those weird like little things when you're eight, you're nine years old, those kind of stick into your head. Mm -hmm. But like somebody's face melting off, Mm -mm. I didn't think or of that. Things that are going on. I, um, I remember watching um, my first, <laughs> I saw Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan. It was PG. And uh, I think I could have her watch it, but I do feel like that the apes or the gorillas or would 
probably scare her. Although they didn't scare him. I was, I love that movie. I think we went to go see that movie in the movie theater pop four times because I totally went nuts over this movie. I loved it. And then um, I saw The Color Purple, um, which was PG-13. And in the beginning, we've got some stuff going on that uh, I didn't even, I didn't know what was happening. So I just kind of, okay, whatever. And then I went on with the movie, the the colors of the purple and everything, and then of the flowers. And then watching this life, I was, that came out in 1985. Yeah, I was 10 years old. I was captivated. I remember my mother, my mother saying that I just, she kept looking over at my face and I just was like, <clears throat> you know, I loved it. And it was the same way. I mean, those types, I mean, they had some pretty adult things going on and all these movies and I just didn't even think about it. Um, the thing that I found interesting was that people got really upset <laughs> At the Temple of Doom coming out as PG, and they took their kids to it at Temple of Doom. I'm sorry, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. And there was some crazy crap going on in there. And uh, that movie in Gremlins, and they flipped. And that's where they came up with PG-13. So the first PG-13 movie that came out was Red Dawn, um, which I didn't see. <laughs> so um, not till later, I mean. So I thought that was... Um, very interesting and I was researching what the difference between like the PG today and what is different than it was before so PG back then could have the things that PG-13 movies have now so you could have uh, they, they rarely have blood spray at people but they Normally, if it sprays, it's R, by the way. You can have blood in it, but it it can't spray. <laughs> Very strange. Um, you can say the F word. I don't know I'm saying the F word, but um, you can say <laughs> what it. What is that F word? Fuck. You can say <laughs> fuck um, one time. There is a, that you can say, actually, uh, there is a movie that uses the F word and it is a PG-13 movie five times. Because they said it, they used it twice in text messages. Another guy yells it, and then somebody bleeps it or something stupid. What movie is this? Um, I don't even know. Okay, I, not a Robert De Niro no. or Al Pacino movie. Mm-mm. But they have lots of things where they came up with um, rated PG for frightening scenes, language, drug use. Um, R was so like for me the the violence and the the gory type things that hasn't been the stuff that as I've watched with my kids that has made me like whoa hit the pause button or turn this off it has been the stuff that go into like talk about sexual things right. and that you're like huh that's not appropriate for them to be listening to. Um, right. You know, like you, you'd look at like something like Police Academy. All of a sudden, you know, what is it? One of the scenes where they're all running around topless. Right. Um, what uh, is it? You have the scene in Back to the Future where it's basically a rape scene happening in the car. And right. it's like. Yes. Yes. We watched that and I fast forwarded through it. Even though I watched it as a kid all the time and didn't bother. I was 10. But like a movie like Jurassic Park where they're getting eaten by a dinosaur. Yeah, they're they're gonna get eaten by a dinosaur. It's about dinosaurs, but there's not anybody. You know, there wasn't any of these like sexual tension or you know somebody jumping on top of somebody. And it's like so. Those have been the things that have made me stop in my track and like both me and my wife sitting there. We're both like, <laughs> you know, like how fast can we hit it's the, the pause is, button? Well, there's even scenes. That, I mean, I put Police Academy up there because. Grace had never seen it before. Grace comes from a very uh, kind of, you know, sheltered family where I can backtrack that a little bit. And where when I first met her and I met her family, everything was great. And I wanted to show her Christmas vacation. Right. <laughs> and I had grown up I watching that. that. I had grown up watching that every year for Christmas with my parents. And it was not a big deal at all. Yeah. 
but her parents were so conservative and just so like just constricted. So I'm enjoying the film, we're laughing, everything like that, right? And then Clark has this whole tirade toward the end of the film, I know, and I'm watching, and I'm like, oh, I forgot about that. Her <laughs> father's pale, Grizz is pale. Her mom's sister, her sister is like okay, because she but she pretended to be uncomfortable, but you can tell it didn't bother her. But Grace was uncomfortable. Her dad was kind of shifting around. Her mom was like, eh. and I'm like. That one little moment, you know, I'm like, oh. I laugh really, yeah. really hard. Yeah. That was probably one of the, the films a couple years ago when I was, when this first, like, popped up to me. Like, oh, they're, they realize, they they can kind of connect the dots now. Like, the girls, like, mm. and it was like, you know, you have the scene where the girl's coming out of the, the swimming pool in his imagination. And it's like, this isn't really appropriate for well, kids. You didn't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. Well, even going back to that same thing, there's a scene in. And then the scene in the makeup counter. Yeah. It was just, it's like completely inappropriate for. Slightly. European Vacation has a scene where Clark is videotaping Beverly D'Angelo in the shower. (laughs) And that's not in any other cut I've seen, but when I had the DVD at home, I'm watching it with Grace. I'm like, wow, I didn't remember seeing this scene. She said, maybe you did see it, but it didn't phase you. But I'm watching this with Grace for the first time. European Vacation, you know, and. He's before they go on their trip. He's basically filming his wife in the shower naked, and then they have a sex scene. And then I'm like, "What? Why didn't I see yeah. Beverly? Why didn't that hit me when I was young?" Police Academy. He's watching girls showering, you know. And he, then yeah, it's like it didn't phase me. But then watching it with my wife, and then Grace and I wanted to show Marnie Christmas Vacation and Sebastian too, but we can't until she's not going to echo everything she hears in the film. And it's here's the thing: is that if you guys are talking about something about uh, you watched. You saw something where people were taking uh, Disney characters or no uh, cartoon characters and making them into real people and how terrifying they would be. I mean, the cool world. Yeah. Okay. So Disney has a young girl who's cast away um, and starts living with seven little men she doesn't know who basically make her do a whole bunch of house quote-unquote housewife things and um she never learns to not open the door she never learns about strangers and then we have her marrying a guy that kisses her dead corpse this is awesome and then um yeah cinderella she doesn't help herself she doesn't speak up she waits for this fairy you know her fairy godmother to help her out and the prince she dan- he dances with her all night does not ask her name doesn't remember what she looks like when she leaves this is this, why I won't let Marnie watch those older is, Disney films this, this, is, this is not what, you, what we want to teach our kids I'm, I'm, I mean so annoying to me but the thing is uh, um, Sleeping Beauty is beautiful I mean, the art is beautiful. I like the movie because the art is beautiful. Um, but again, she falls in love with a stranger. She doesn't know the entire time her parents are alive. She doesn't have any time of mental breakdown when she finds this out. And she's in an arranged marriage. Okay. Um, now, when I did see Ari- now when I did see The Little Mermaid, it did piss me off. Because she falls in love with a guy that she doesn't know anything about. She gives up the thing, best thing about her. Um, so she gives something up to get with a guy that has, so she loses her voice and he has to fall in love with her by her looks. I mean, it's just so sick. And then he, she leaves her entire family for this guy that she barely knows. That really pissed me off. Um, Beauty and the Beast, I guess, Kinder corrected me and said that Disney took off with it and... Um, in the original version, he has dinner with her and then says, you can leave at any time. But she ends up going in with this guy that, or this beast that took her father. She switches places with him. Any other girl would try to escape as much as possible. Stockholm Syndrome. It is. Right. It's Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> exactly. It, then, she, then she returns. It's like crazy. Aladdin has horrible. Like, <laughs> I don't even know what to the, say. Um, Aladdin. And Ralph breaks the internet, and I think it's in oh. the uh, it's in the tr- one of the trailers is when uh, she breaks in and lands in the middle of all the princesses. 
Disney princesses and they're like, are you a princess? He's like, and they go through all this like list of, have you done this? Have you done this? And this, and it's just funny because it just, it's, it's like sickening. It's and Disney all- looking back on itself and saying, yeah, we've had a little bit of, you know, they even said the white savior syndrome, the princess and the frog had a problem with having a black princess because they had her turn into a frog. And so she was green through most of the movie and, and Kendra's like, well, that's kind of a stretch. I said, are there not black frogs? There are black frogs. Are there not? There are. I said, I'm sure frog. there's every color in yeah. the wind So frog. why in the hell can't they have a black frog? I don't know, because most kids know him as green. And I was very, irrit- I just thought, oh, that's very interesting. Um, so Disney got away with it forever. And we watched it because, and I mean, anything. Um, so they were talking about the things that scar children. And we watched them all. Anything where the mother dies, uh, which is basically every Disney movie in the world. Um, or a parent dies. Well, the funny thing, well, no, it's not funny. Dies. It's not funny. I shouldn't say it's funny. It's becu- uh, it's interesting. Um, Walt, in the documentary, and I, I read about it too, but it was hit more home watching it. But they said that his mother died in a gas poisoning incident. So that could be why he always had the maternal figures die because before he really took off into animating and that kind of thing, he, his mother, he brought his mother and father from where they were down to California with the rest of the family and his mother died of a, you know, gas leak basically that they wanted to fix and they requested repeatedly to be fixed and it wasn't. And then his father escaped alive, but his mother was the victim of that accident. So it could be just a mental recurring motif he just has in his, he had, yeah. So, and Bambi, Bambi. Oh my gosh. Anyway, yeah. I um, Stand by Me. By the way, was R. I was eleven. Mm. I didn't realize it was R. I like I looked up and went, oh, it's R. I mean, yeah. So I watched that at eleven years old. Breakfast Club R, nineteen eighty five. I was ten. Um, I was Teen Wolf. Um. I don't know what that was. Nah, I didn't see. It. I didn't see Fright Night in the theater. I did watch all the Police Academies because I liked the guy. I love. But she says, "Zip your lips, slap your butts to seat, and listen hard," or something like that. Steve Guttenberg. Um, yeah, and uh, but I mean, I was watching shows that I thought were hilarious, but I didn't get it. I mean, Three's Company, totally, mm. totally wrong. Uh, Fantasy Island had some weird shit going on there. Um, and Dukes of Hazard. We just were talking about this. Dukes of Hazard. Let's let's think about the Dukes of Hazard. I love the car. I, I but man, was it problematic? My gosh, it's so, so I, ridiculous. I loved, I loved that show as a kid. Loved I, it, loved it. Bo Duke. They Hello. came out with the box DVD set. Two thousand four. Bought the whole box DVD set and just started watching it. And I'm just like, oh. It's bad. It's bad. But it was my favorite TV show. Yeah. I mean, and my parents let me watch how it. How to exploit this, how to exploit that. <laughs> my mom didn't really want me to watch. I remember her I remember her kind of having an issue with me watching Three's Company and I didn't have any clue why. Like, what's the problem? I don't understand what the problem is. And I watched that with no, I mean, I watched it all the time. But I, I do remember her thinking, like she kept saying little things. Well, this isn't, and I, not, I guess I understand now. But I, I mean, I do understand now. But I'm just saying, huh. And do you let your children watch shows that were good and wholesome and great back then, where we find out that, uh, the lead character was not great and wholesome the entire time Mm. because um, Zoe loves the Cosby show. She watched all, I mean, she watched the actor or you mean the actual character? I mean, you're trying to Uh, the actor. Okay. I I didn't tell her. That's kind of hard. I did not tell her. She can find out later. Yeah. She loved the show. that, That broaches the line of let, let it happen. It was a great show. She loved the show. Because as an art piece, is there anything wrong with it as an art piece? No. No. All right. The The rest of the stuff will come out. There's yeah. a, there's a, you know, there's a Disney show that's the popular one that's on right now. I can't remember the name of it. But the 
the guy who plays the grandfather was just arrested for soliciting sex with a minor. You know, it's like, but that's going to be a little bit more prominent because it's it's happening while it's going on. They said, they said the Disney so, movies that were good were um, Brave. It was good, except that she probably shouldn't be. I mean, she didn't befriend bears. That's not what happened, but whatever. Um, the, you have right. a thing against bears? No, I don't. No, I don't. I had a weird thing growing up where I watched a lot of Golden Girls, and I had people in my family, not my immediate family. <laughs> I loved the Golden Girls. I, so I did too. No, I had people. Is your name Ryan Reynolds? So I had people in my immediate family who were fine with it. My mom was okay with it. My dad was okay with it. But my uncles and aunts were like, "Why are you letting them watch that? It's for old women to watch. It's not oh for my gosh, young, young boys to watch." So I watch this but, whole thing. You know, looking back at it now, I learned so much from watching that show. Like, I learned about issues. Like, I learned about what homosexuality was, what AIDS was, what interracial. They talked about everything under the sun on that show. And it kind of opened my eyes to how the world works. Even during that time, even during the 80s when it was on, it still hit those important topics. So, watching it in the 90s on TV land and things like that, I was learning. Same thing with Buffy. Why are you letting watch that, you know, shows, just horror and blah, blah, blah. But there are issues that, allegories. So, in a way, I'm okay with my daughter watching certain shows. Like, we watch Golden Girls. She doesn't get it, but she sees old ladies, like her grandmothers, you know, haggling back and forth and whatnot, and the wit. And so, it's just stuff like, you know, Teen Wolf or Fright Night. It's like, I'm not against her seeing nudity because that's her body, and I want her to understand that this is what it is, and you can't hide it. Well, you know, not hide it, but, you know, you shouldn't be ashamed of your body. So, That's fine, but I don't want it to be. But I don't want her scarring herself either. Like the, I mean, it's true. Yeah. In Back to the Future, awful. Yeah, and there's scenes in Fright Night where I didn't get it at the time, but like the whole the girl, the female character, not Booth, who I loved. I I wanted to marry Booth as a kid, but um, the girl who was just so opportunistic. Even as a young kid, I said that girl is annoying. Like, and I would see that as I got older. There are women who are like that, and I said. Grace, I don't want our daughter being like this, so I want her to watch this with me when she's old enough to understand that this, what she's doing, is not okay. And there are some men who do it too, so I guess I want to present things in a, a lesson form, like my dad with me, that this is a movie, we can be entertained by it, which is probably why I don't get entertained by movies anymore, and this is what we're going to learn from this movie. These are social tools, but I'm on the fence now where I don't know if I want to rob my daughter of the enjoyment of watching movies, because if I can't, doesn't mean that she can't. Same with my son. I don't want them to be robbed of that joy of watching the whole experience. I agree. It. I mean, so. there are lots of things that I don't want them to see or think. Zoe's very, I, I haven't had her watch Dark Crystal, which I watched. She's so visual that she just, they imprint on her brain. And she just, those are things that I I did not have a problem with. I could watch Dark, dark Crystal. I could watch all these dark shows. I could, I mean, but she, uh, she loves. Uh, I mean, is it inappropriate at times? Probably, but um, I mean, yeah. But she likes Will and Grace. She thinks Will and Grace is funny, <laughs> and um, she started watching. Jason's going to kill me now. Oh, I love Dark Seekers. He doesn't listen. I mean, didn't have time. Yeah, actually, you do have time on those, <laughs> on those airplanes. I'm sorry. You have 18 hours. I think you'd watch and do, listen to it. We could probably put you to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, um, this is us. She's watched a couple episodes of that. Um, but there are, sh- but growing up, I, I did read an article about, yes, there are movies that we watched as kids that technically you're not supposed to be having your children watch. Mm. But we learned a lot about different ways of life like um having them watch black and white movies and how um and westerns having them see different types of i think i think what's happened for me is and it might be a subconscious thing is like sometimes i'm just not ready for that discussion right like the question that'll be posed by you know the question that would have been posed like when i first saw like when they're seven to to nine to 10 range of just like, I really don't want to deal with that issue in that question just yet. And now that they're, you know, one's 14 and one's 12, it's like they understand things a little bit more now. And so it's a lot easier to like, Oh, okay. We can just go on and just watch it. So it was just more of like, you know, five, six years ago, I just wasn't at a point where like, I'm not going to sit here and 
try to describe to a kid what, why is he jumping on that girl in the back of the car and why is the car shaking? And like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's not a discussion I want to have with a seven year old. Um, but you know, now you know, when kids in high school, so like they've been through, they've been through, they know they stuff. Know. It's like, okay, we can just watch stuff and not have to have a huge conversation about it because they kind of understand the nuances of like, okay. Well, I learned a big lesson <clears throat> because Fantastic Beasts came out, the new one. Okay. Right. And you watched five minutes of it? Five minutes. Oh, I came back. What's okay. What was the movie called? Fantastic Beasts and the Crimes of Grimwald. There we go. Um, so the trailers came out. And every single time the trailer came out, Zoe flipped out. Oh, my gosh. I have to see it. I have to see it. I have to see it. Have to see it. And they kept showing beautiful views, blah, 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 blah. We were there for five minutes. She looked at me in tears and said, I got I can't. I got to go. I got to go. Mm-hmm. I was in Tinseltown. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. So I took her home. And I said, the, we can't. We can't be just, we can't watch these things. We can't do PG 13. And I apologize. And, you know, she's yelling at me. I'm thinking, okay, dude, you've seen PG 13. I had no idea. The only thing that had happened was he was, Johnny Depp's character was sitting in a room. That was it. That was the only thing. We didn't even see his face. She just, what happened was when you go take somebody to a PG 13 movie, you get PG thirteen review like trailers. pre tra- tra- trailers and they oh, scared the yeah. crap out of her and so she was already terrified and thinking oh my gosh what am I in for so I took her home and came back and you know what um, seeing that movie on a huge screen uh, yeah there's no way so you took her home and came back you were almost an hour into the movie when you came back into it that's right because Kendra was there mm. and I just sat there and she leaned over and I said don't even don't don't worry about it I don't need to. Don't, I don't need to be caught up. Give me a break. I'm just going to sit here and watch the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. We'll go home. <clears throat> so I learned a lesson there. Um, larger than life, Harry Potter is a lot different than on the TV screen. Harry Potter stuff. Harry Potter-esque meaning. Fantasy. Fantasy type of things where there are. Because if she would have seen some of the Harry Potters on big screen, I think they would terrify her. But on the small screen... De- a dementor may have may have scared her, but on the small screen it didn't. So um, you just never know. I mean, it was my fault for taking a nine year old to a PG thirteen movie when, even though they can handle some, it doesn't mean they can handle others. You just have to know about you. have to know your kid. That's part of being a parent. Is we we figure out what those boundaries are and what they're ready for and what they're not. And that's how happens. We make big big mistakes. I got in like Indiana Jones. You got to make sure that they're ready. Which it was fine. I don't think she got Indy. I thought it was awesome, but I think that we were just, I don't know why it was okay for us. I don't think we were protected as much. We weren't, we just watched whatever mm-hmm. and it didn't. Nothing was explained. We didn't have to have, have big talks about things. Nothing was skipped over because as soon as you skip it over, they think we didn't have Google. Wait a minute, right? And the internet <laughs> that could have led to some really interesting rabbit holes if we had Google when I was that young. The internet at all would have been awful. Yeah. It would have been awful. So I mean, I feel like um, I didn't see anything when I was a kid. The only thing that I can think that scarred me. You can laugh. But I do track it back to this. This is so ridiculous. I'm over it now. But the Muppet movie, I'm not kidding. The Muppet, I think it was 1980 or 79. Anyway, where, oh shoot, what's that guy's name? He gets huge. They blow him up really big and then he crashes through um, a sign. Um, Is his name, he's really hairy. Yeah, I'm blanking right now. I'm just more, that was, okay, keep going. Anyway, boom, boom, boom. Like he's walking and he crashes through the sign. Terrified me. And until. Uh, that, that was Animal, right? Yeah, Animal. Yeah. Animal gets enormous. And to this day, that sound of no, 
like knowing that something enormous is coming. So fast forward to Jurassic Park. No, no, no. Oh wait, no Ghostbusters. Did no, no, nothing with Jurassic Park with the T Rex coming. No, Ghostbusters didn't really do anything. Okay, this is a silly story, but I, um, Jason and I were sort of, well, yeah, that sounds weird. We were dating, and um, we were going to go see King Kong, mm. and I knew that I had this fear, so I went to see it by myself <laughs> first. Did not tell him. Just to see if I could get through it. And I was like, okay, I can do it. And then I just faked it and pretended that I'd never seen it. And that was fine. Wow. That's, um. Because I was terrified of this huge. I just get terrified of really, really big things. Like the end of, uh, the end of the, it's has Superman. Batman and Wonder Woman. Justice League? Was it Batman versus Superman? Yeah. yeah. That, what, what is that thing that comes yeah, at the end? Uh, Doomsday. Doomsday. Holy crap. That, I mean, that terrified that, me. But <clears throat> Stay Puft Marshmallow Man didn't bother you? Huh. Good. <laughs> but you know what? You, I can't, done, you know why done, I can't done. have her watch it? Is because Sigourney Weaver turns into some like sexy, insane slave at the end. Upstairs. She's an embodiment of a god. This. I know, but no way. She can't watch that. Who? Zoe. Oh, good to know. All right. Well, on that note, I think that wraps up our discussion. <laughs> okay. Boom, no. boom, boom, boom. Shush. All right. Uh, we have not decided on our next show topic or media, but <laughs> let's reach into our grab bag. And what do we have in there? In the kids' corner. Oh, in the kids' corner. Oh, in the kids' corner, I actually watched, partly watched, I will admit that, um, the girls saw the Christmas Chronicles. I'm trying to find it on here. Christmas Chronicles that was just released on Netflix starring Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. As yeah. Santa Claus driving a Challenger. Yes. It was really funny. A what? That's Challenger. Wow. Yeah. That's um, all I remember from the trailer was him screaming down driving was, a Challenger. And I was down there. I, I was watching it with, with Zoe and Zoe said... Mom said, watch this for a minute. Watch, watch, watch. I said, okay, what is it? She said, Sam is kind of, um, he's really good looking. I said, well, it's <laughs> Kurt Russell. Of course he's good looking. She said, wait, wait, wait till he t- takes his hat off. She took his hat. She's like, look at that. I said, yeah, it's Kurt Russell. She's like, I just have never pictured Sam being so good looking before. I thought that was really funny. It's a cute movie. I... The girls liked it a lot. I thought it was really cute. And it's on Netflix. It, it came out in November, but it's still on there. And I recommend that one. Um, his son was in Overlord. I don't know what that is. That was the that was the movie I watched a couple a couple weeks ago. Oh. But his yeah, his son is starting to make uh some waves as an actor. Cool. But yeah, that uh Netflix. Go watch that. All right. And if you want our book of the week, go back and listen to our Audible read. Because mm-hmm. we just did that. Uh, game app of the week. Uh, just finished Red Dead last week. You did it. Um, that was a really long amount of time. <laughs> um, so I still have like a ton of little things to go back and finish. But it's in terms of the main story and all the way through, it's all done. It was good. I really enjoyed it. Um <clears throat> And they just had one of the major game awards this week, and the actual one that won was God of War, um, which was mm. surprising. But God of War was a really good game too. Um, just started playing Battlefield Five. Um, it is definitely geared more towards online play with a very very limited story. Okay. Um, so it has its moments, but it's not it's not as involved as something like Red Dead Redemption. Um, the next one I'm looking forward to is I can't remember when it comes out, but Last of Us Two when that one comes out. All right, uh, what's on your radar? What's in your queue, Tony? Okay, so a um, couple weeks uh, passed since this episode. Um, I watched uh, Miles Jaboni. He's an Iranian American comic. He's on Netflix. Uh, my wife was watching it, some of it, at work when she should have been working, and she was laughing out loud, crying, and her boss asked her why she was crying. So she said, "I'm watching stand-up comedy on Netflix instead of working." So um, she told me, 
<laughs> so uh, she uh, tipped that to me to watch. And Maz Sharoni, I watched both of his comedy specials, but I'm going to recommend his immigrant special. It's more current and I think more um, laugh aloud funny, more gut chucking, not vomit, but like laughter all around. He takes some jabs at Trump, some jab about, you know, xenophobia in a nice clean way. And he's reminds me of a Iranian Billy Crystal, if that means anything. Um, really good guy, really funny. Um, he'll be in Toronto, I think, in a couple months. So I'm going to see if I can see, swing up there and see him for that. Um, what else here? Uh, tonight is WWE's TLC, Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. Starts at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on the WWE Network. I'll be watching that. Uh, next Sunday is the 20th, I believe. And that's when Timeless, the movie, will be premiering, the two-hour special. So I'll be watching that. That's on my radar uh, to watch that. I'll be watching more Sabres games uh, until the new year and after that. That's on my radar. And uh, yeah, also a little side note. Guys, if you have music out there, you have a band or you've recorded something and you want us to review it, please send us a message, a PM or a email. Ron will give you our information and we would like to review your music. So that means you, Jackson Cavalier, if you have a new album, which you do, and you keep telling me I should listen to it, please send it to us and we will <laughs> listen to it and give you feedback. Um, we're not the best music critics critics out there, but we still have taste. Eh. We pump it up. <laughs> so we're not um, the best. <laughs> well, we're not like Jeff Spavak, who, you know, is writing now stuff that's not music related. So we have some game left. But uh yeah, we want to hear your music. We want to support local artists, musicians, and stuff. So we want to hear it, we want to talk about it, and we want to play it for you. So think about it. Um, I had a, you know, another one of those couple of weeks of just catching up on a bunch of stuff. Um, so Creed 2 came out, saw it, liked it a lot, recommend it. Grinch, meh, pass. Okay, good to know. Um, Nothing special about that. Um, Outlaw King, I was expecting a lot more. That's the one with Chris Pine on Netflix. Okay. Um, I was hoping for something better. was not very good. Um, so don't waste your time on that. Buster Scruggs, however, is a very good Coen's movie, okay. and I would recommend seeing that. Um, I'm going to skip over that one for a second. Um, caught up on a couple of movies that are now out on video that I had on my radar for a while. Peppermint. Pass, Den of Thieves, really? Pass, uh, The New Maze Runner, Pass, and The Meg. Surprisingly, it's fun enough to actually go ahead, rent it, watch it. It's really weird. Can I ask a question? My dad likes action comedy weird films. Would he like this? Is it like totally like laugh out loud funny moments? Which or? one, The Meg? The Meg. No, it's not laugh out loud moments. It's just like it's, awkward. It's just, yeah, awkward. Okay. <laughs> it's it's stuff that's not supposed to be comedy, but it comes off as comedy. Okay. Um. It's a Jason Statham film. If you like Jason Statham, he does. just okay. watch it. But um, it's really weird because it's like this is a mass market movie that was not made in America. And it's very obvious that it wasn't geared towards our American market. It is definitely geared towards the Japanese market of we like our big monsters. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, that casting reflects that. But the way it's made reflects that. And they just happen to have Jason Statham in. Okay. Rain Wilson as two of the people that they got to be in it. Interesting. Um, so yeah, there's there's those. Um, my big recommend is if you were a fan of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel season one, Marvelous Miss Maisel season two just came out and it is great. I love it. Um, I really love the first season. I like the way it's written. Um, I specifically love uh, how the dialogue is written. It's very snappy and uh, very quick. And in addition to this year, uh, so one of the big things that they did is, um, is it Amy Sherman Palladino, I think is the, the writer behind this. Uh, she said, when you have such a perfect season as you did last year, what do you do? And she said, the, you should just blow up the season and you just blow up everything. And so like everything that worked in the first season, they just completely dismantled for the second season. And then as a bonus, they also have Zach Levi in it. Oh, so she's in. Yeah. Well, Chuck. Yeah, that too. Chuck first. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> um, and he is just, he's ripped because he, it was obvious this was filmed why he was doing Shazam. So he's just, he's supposed to be, he's playing a Jewish doctor, <laughs> but he's just the six foot four 
and his muscles are just huge. And you're just like, it's just funny because the Zach Levi that I've seen before this was never this big guy. And now he is. And, um, but yeah, if you, if you enjoyed season one, then I think you'll love season two. Um, if season one wasn't for you, then go ahead and pass on it. Um, but I think the writing is great. Um, uh, for those of you not familiar with, um, the first season at all, um, if you're a past fan of anything that's Amy Sherman Palladino's, uh, what was the, the big one? Gilmore Girls. Yes. Um, she's the creator behind that. Um, listening to not much at this moment in time, but I have a couple things going on at work, so I'm going to be listening to a lot over the next couple weeks. Um, on my radar, we've got Mary Poppins, uh, Vice, uh, Marwin, and Bumblebee all come out within the next week. And then in my queue... Uh, we have like seven episodes of Doctor Who to catch up on from this season. Um, and then they're finishing off this season with a New Year's special instead of a Christmas special. Mm. And then we won't get any more Doctor Who until 2020, mm. which is an extremely long time. Then we have a couple Christmas flicks to watch and vacation. <laughs> vacation. Me, vacation. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Uh, let's see what I, I went to go see Hamilton, by the way. But uh, Shea Cedar, I've never been there before. Over in Good Buffalo. Place. Yeah. Because uh, my daughter, Zoe, loves Hamilton. And um, they, did, they did a fantastic job. I We cried many times. And... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I saw sort of Fantastic Beasts, not really. And then um, I, I I haven't been in the movie movie theater since. So, and I haven't watched much TV. Um, so, yeah, gosh, I'm really boring. And the listening is mostly um, books. Oh. And, uh, but in my... I did it wrong, didn't I? I always do that wrong. Your radar. 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 No, Radar is Mary Poppins Returns. I already have my tickets. Um, now I'm second guessing Aquaman. Uh, but I kind of want to see Robin Hood. I'll probably see that with Grace. I really want to see that. I still want to see it, but man, it got trashed. Did it really? Yeah. Hard. Oh, shoot. Well. And I just figured it was one of those, like, and I don't usually like to read a bunch of reviews, but it was like, there's so much stuff coming out that I need to choose like what I'm going to fill my schedule with. And I'm waiting. There still hasn't been a movie that's that I have to go see yet. I don't know. Um, and then in our queue, I mean, my goodness, we are still watching little house on the prairie because I have little girls and that's what we do. And, uh, we watch white Christmas when we make our Christmas cookies. It's a, that's what we do every year. Uh, I'll watch Christmas Vacation probably alone. And um, alone. Well, or with Kendra if she's around. Mm. Um, Sabrina? Question mark. Um, if I can get there, if I can watch that, I have to catch Kendra up and watch. Do you that. like Christmas Story at all? No, I hate Christmas a Story. Christmas, I'm sorry. There's a Christmas special now too that just came out. Uh, on Friday for Sabrina. Oh, okay. Um, I hate the Christmas story. Of the, a Christmas story. The Christmas, a Christmas story. story. Okay. Dustin's favorite movie of all time. He got. He went to Cleveland specifically to go to see the house. <laughs> loves it. Loves there. it. Loves it. Loves it. I hate that movie. Yeah. And everyone, I. It's my one of those things that people can't stand about me. And uh, well, to follow up with that, you talked about how much you love sound of music. I hate sound of music. That's and okay. it's because of the same reason why I don't like Christmas Story is because it was on every year. And then TBS started playing Christmas Story. In a loop. It Not wasn't, only on TBS, then on TNT. <laughs> right. It wasn't that it was on all the time. Yeah. I just hated the movie. Mm. I think the sound of music is more of like a heart, like a... You're telling me I don't have a heart? I think she used to. No, I'm saying I, ha no, no, no. She felt that touch, that thought. It was like, the. it was linked to my grandparents. It's linked to, you know, the whole thing. A Christmas story, it, you shoot your eye out. Oh, bullshit, I hate that crap. <laughs> um, and then Christmas Vacation, 
I just, <laughs> what was that dog hacking up about? I just, there are just so many fantastic, it's the best vacation movie I think they made. I'm sorry. It is. Exactly. It is just so funny. Uh, it will also, it's the family stone. I forgot to put that on there. Um, and is it called the British, the great British bake off? Yeah. We've been watching that. And then there's another one called and I should have, Nailed It. Oh, I heard okay, that. Okay, we started watching Nailed It because everybody started talking about the fact that they're watching Nailed It. And when I say everybody, I'm talking about all the moms okay. that I deal with. Um, and so I, it's just, I watch weird stuff now. It's a good thing. Weird mm-hmm. kids stuff. And I, uh, I need to get back on track of it. Have like, you watched Moonlight yet? No. Mm, okay. No, but I did hear um actually when we were talking about colors, um and I was talking um to actually Brigitte that was on the show. That mm-hmm. was on the show uh about um postpartum. Thank you. She brought up Moonlight for coloring for the colors. And I haven't watched it. Sorry. Okay. That's it. Apologize to me. All right. Well I think that wraps up our show. Uh, Valerie, where can we find you? <laughs> you know, I always make that joke, but it's so true. Um, I am at VB Vidmar at, at Twitter and Instagram. I'm Penny Lane sixty four. Tony, I'm on Twitter at at s m t o r c h i o. I'm on Instagram at a n t c a r t e r eighty five, and Facebook is Anthony dot Carter dot one six seven. Um, that's where I am. And you can find me pretty much everywhere as at GF Media. You can no longer find me on my personal Facebook because that no longer exists. Tears. 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 I'm about no, there's to... no tears in, in a personal Facebook. I was thinking that I was going to do a Valerie Vidmar, I don't know, like a parent one that just dealt with school stuff mm. and let everything else go. Because... Ugh. I don't really get on there. Yeah, just unfriend all your friends. Just that was what I did last year. Just unfriended everybody except for family. But then everybody started friending me back. <laughs> it's like, Awkward. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just using Facebook as purely as business. And then uh, everywhere else you can find me as GF Media. So I can focus more on my projects and, yeah, more on life. I agree. And, uh, so you can find us at culturalstew.net and at culturalstew.net on Twitter and culturalstew on Facebook. Until next time, we'll catch you after the new year. Ciao. Happy new year. Oh. Happy winter solstice. Um, my dad's birthday is the 17th of December, so happy birthday, Dad. And I'm getting you movies for your birthday. Tomorrow? Ciao. It is tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> you make it sound like it's so far in the future of like... 17th is tomorrow. <laughs> but, so happy birthday a couple of days ago. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it come out like Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, still. So you're getting movies we hope you have for Christmas and your birthday. We're talking about you in the past, yes. in, in the, the future, future, about the past. Right. I hope you had a wonderful birthday. <laughs> All right. Later. Ciao. I'll let you go. Just need some time. The intro and break music is Please Listen Carefully by Jazir, available through the Creative Commons license from Free Music Archive. The outgoing music is provided by Epidemic Sound. Please see our show notes for details on what the outgoing song is and who it is by. And also, as always, if you have a piece of music that you'd like us to play or consider playing, please contact us today. You do not know what I have in mind Packed our bags, we'll be on our way The night was long as I waited without a sign A sign of what matters Matters to you But what do you want? What's your biggest need? Every hour Small
just like the lottery Like what you've heard? Want to continue to hear more? Please consider Patreon. What is Patreon, you ask? Patreon is a content creator support site, a way for people to support the things they love and allow creators to continue creating the content that they love. Please consider heading over to patreon.com slash gfmedia and becoming a Patreon supporter today.